Bonjour à tous. Euh, je suis Xavier de MySQL en France et je vais juste dire une phrase d'introduction pour euh, notre, euh, notre patron de l'engineering. Quand vous téléphonez avec votre mobile, je ne sais pas si vous le savez, euh, à chaque fois que vous passez un appel par les opérateurs telco, vous utilisez une base de données MySQL Cluster dans une très très large majorité des cas. Et Thomas est le patron de ce projet MySQL Cluster avant d'être devenu notre patron de l'engineering depuis 15 ans. Et euh, je suis très heureux de l'avoir euh, à Paris avec nous aujourd'hui pour vous euh, parler de cette évolution euh, majeure de MySQL vers le JSON et encore de nouvelles aventures. Mais euh, voilà, pour aujourd'hui, euh, vous avez le sujet. Je passe la parole à Thomas. Uh, thank you, Xavier. And I've been switching to English. My French is not so strong. Um, So, uh, just a, a quick uh, compliment to Xavier's introduction, which I think he told me was going to be about MySQL cluster and its usage, used, usage in the, in the uh, mobile networks. Uh, so, I, I joined MySQL in 2003, and that was with that team uh, that I headed up uh, from Ericsson uh, that built uh, MySQL cluster back in the days. Uh, I was also heavily involved in the development of the rule-based replication uh, code. So I've, I've been working in, in many different parts of the, 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 the MySQL code base. Uh, nowadays, it's uh, all uh, management, but uh, just want to stress that I have a, a long history on actually uh, working in this code base. And this will be by far the uh, most technical talk that I've given in a long time. But uh, to be honest, I, I really enjoy it. It's sort of back to my roots. So hopefully I can convey some interesting uh, insights into MySQL uh, on the technical side uh, to get today. Uh, okay, our regular safe harbor statement uh, basically says that, okay, I'll leave it up in a bit, basically says that, okay, if I say anything here, you can't really trust it. It might come, it might not come, but I'll only be discussing things that we already delivered, so um, it's not going to be any huge uh, surprises for the future here. So the outline of the talk today is basically a, a quick intro. I'll give a few uh, sort of highlight slides before I dig into the, the core of the talk today, which is around JSON and the new JSON feature in MySQL. Uh, then <clears throat> some just quick notes on when to use JSON and when not to use, use JSON, and maybe we should have combinations of the, of the two, and then some uh, other highlights that might be of interest to you around MySQL and news in MySQL uh, more gear, geared towards uh, the PHP <coughs> use cases. And anytime, I, I think we're going to have questions in the end. It's the easiest thing because I think it's a, a quite a large room, so maybe it's hard to to convey. So if you if you keep your mess, uh, your your questions to the end, I'll try to make sure we have some room for for some questions there, and we can pass the mic around. Uh, first of all, I think we all should recognize that this is a year of anniversaries. Uh, MySQL been, has been around for 20 years. Uh, I've been with MySQL for now uh, 12 years, uh, going on the 13th year. Uh, PHP has been around uh, for 20 years. They've gone hand in hand uh, <coughs> for many years. It's 15 years now with a French uh, user group for PHP. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but it's been now 10 years since Oracle got engaged with MySQL in the sense that they uh, purchased InnoDB, which is the core storage engine in My, um, MySQL, which I think uh, most of you who work with MySQL are, are using um, today. And then since the past five years, uh, myself and the team have been with Oracle, uh, continuing to, to develop uh, MySQL. Uh, the highlight slide, or the summary slide for 5.7, which went, went GA just the other month, um, is performance and scalability and manageability. And today I will mention a few of these, but it's going to be focused on the, the native JSON support. Um, um, If you've seen previous presentations around MySQL, there's always been a slide very similar to this one. It's just that now the numbers have shifted on the end there, and now 5.7 is so many X times faster than, than uh, 5.6. And uh, a great achievement by the team, I think, is something that comes, I mean, 
benefits most people just by deploying the new version. You get a lot of speed up. Uh, the focus has been here to move MySQL and MySQL 5.0 and 5.1 into the area of being able to run on bigger boxes. Uh, so you have here 1.6 million uh, point selects currently on a big 144 CPU thread box. So what we want to show here is basically how well MySQL scales with the, the load and how it flattens out on the top. It doesn't degrade because of mutex contentions and so on. I won't dwell on this anymore. It's not the main topic of the talk. Uh, the other thing that I think uh, can be beneficial uh, in this uh, forum uh, is around uh, connect is connect, uh, which uh, is very important uh, when you have like short connections, run a query, disconnect, uh, connect, run a query. So uh, with 5.7, we've bumped this up to being able to do 100,000 uh, connections uh, per second. Uh, by the way, this is work that has been carried out together with, uh, with uh, Facebook um, for 5.7. For yeah, okay, wrong direction. <coughs> uh, before I move over to the, the topic uh, of today, Jason, I uh, just want to highlight that we also have come out with a new product called MySQL Router. Uh, it's also an open source product, um, uh, which is geared towards making the backend many MySQL servers just be seen as one single service here so that your application doesn't have to think about your topology on the back end. Uh, you can learn more about 5.7 and the router and all the other goodies uh, at the Tech Talk in Paris uh, on December the 8th. Uh, so you're all invited to come there. Uh, it's a free thing. Uh, there's some something served and so on. Uh, but uh, take a look at the, uh, at the Tech Tour. Uh, plans and make sure you register and, and, and you're most welcome. <coughs> okay, the core new JSON features. <coughs> so I'm going to cover, sorry, I have a bit of a cold, so I need to clear my throat. So uh, the, the core new features uh, around JSON, there are really three parts to it. It's the native JSON data type, uh, it's the JSON functions, and it's the generated columns together with also the indexing capabilities, the functional indexes. That's what builds up the core of the, of the JSON functionality. So I'm going to take them one by one. So the new JSON data type that we introduced in 5.7 basically looks like, okay, I don't have a pointer now, but you basically see in red here, you can now have uh, a data type called JSON, like you could have an integer or you could have a, a var car or whatever. Uh, you insert into it just like you insert into any other uh, uh, data. It's just a, a new format there around uh, key value pairs in a, in, in a JSON formatted string. Uh, and then you can, of course, once you've inserted them, you can select them and then you get them out in, in that format. So that's the basics. Some details around the JSON data type. Uh, it's a UTF-8. Uh, it's optimized for read-intensive workload. Uh, uh, parse and validation happens on insert only. And uh, when it's uh, parsed and validated, uh, each object gets a, a dictionary of sorted object keys. I'll come back to that later and why we do that. And then also when it has arrays inside the JSON data type, there is also a, an indexing capability into the actual uh, array data. I'll be coming back to that shortly. More. So it supports all the native JSON data types, like numbers, strings, booleans, objects, arrays. But we also have extended it to include date, time, date, time, timestamp, and some others. So you can read all the details in, in the documentation around that, of course. <coughs> So what, what you might have done uh, in the past when you didn't have this was basically to insert your JSON blobs or your JSON text into just a, a, a text or a varkar uh, object. And why is this better? Uh, first of all, when you insert something, it does validation on insert. So if you try to, if you created what we saw before, uh, a JSON data type, and then you try to insert something which doesn't look like a JSON 
uh, object, you will get an error. So invalid JSON text, we expect a value, and then, of course, what you try to type in there and say that that's wrong. The other thing that you get is a very efficient uh, binary format. Uh, what I explained that was actually the keys were sorted and so on. So it, 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 I show some slides uh, later where you actually see this. So it just gives like a, a very efficient way to, to store the data, which is much, be much better than the, the, the text way of, of, of storing it. So the other thing uh, then, except the data type, the second thing are the JSON functions that, that, I, that I listed there on the previous slide. So I'll, I'll go through a few of them. There are many of them, and I won't list them all. But one of the core ones is, of course, JSON extract. And here's a very simple example. It's operating on just a, a variable on the server side, uh, which you can, of course, do. And it shows how you actually access uh, items in an array. So here, it starts from zero, so if you have a, 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 a variable and then you just do select JSON extract from that variable and you pick the second element, you will get, okay, this is what I asked for, JSON extract, and then the 20 there, which is the second element in the, in the, and of course, if I put a two there, I'll get the array, and if I put a zero there, then I'll get the 10 in the beginning. So that's the basic JSON extract, and it will be perhaps the most used uh, JSON function. And the reason, uh, and, and because it's, it's so uh, commonly used, uh, we decided to, uh, instead of having to type JSON extract everywhere, uh, which is, by the way, is very similar to, uh, to uh, a selector in, in jQuery, for example, instead of taking sort of the column name or the variable and then the extraction that you want to extract, you can have a shorthand where you actually have an, like an arrow operator here, where you actually have the column name and then the fact that you want to extract something and this. So you'll see, uh, I won't be using JSON extract in the coming slides. I'll be using that shorthand form. Um, yeah, so I'll come back to that. Uh, so now let's look at some real life uh, example here, so real life data. So what we done, did, or actually Morgan did, was to uh, uh, take uh, uh, San Francisco Open Data database. It's about 200,000 uh, objects. Uh, which basically uh, represents uh, 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 areas or, or places in San Francisco. And uh, the basic format uh, that when we ported into to the, to the JSON is basically, okay, an ID, which is an auto increment, and then a JSON uh, data type. You can find all the details there on that, on that page. We'll post this on SlideShare or something, and, and, and you'll be able to jump in and look at that yourself. But the, uh, the JSON objects looks basically like this. <coughs> so you have a, a type here. Everything in this is feature, as you will see shortly. There's a geometry thing here around, OK, where is this thing in San Francisco? And then some properties around uh, address and street and, and, and so on um, in the rest of the, of the JSON object. So I'll be using this as examples moving forward. So if you have this data set, then you do your basic uh, search uh, from those 200,000 uh, 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 objects. You do select star from features, which was the, the table here. And then feature is the column name. Um, just to make sure that you follow here because I'm, it gets confusing for myself sometimes. Uh, so the table is features. And then the JSON uh, column name is feature. Okay, so what I want to do here, and here I, by the way, I use the JSON, the shorthand form for JSON extract. I want to find uh, all, uh, or actually limit one here says I would just want to find one, but give, just give me the first instance of an object which is on the street, Market Street of San Francisco, if you've been there. It's a, it's a long street that runs through the whole city and, and, and uh, all the way down to the, to the ocean. Uh, so it just returns here, basically, the, 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 the first object in the database, which is on that street. Um, point out, so you, if you want to find, uh, uh, that was one you want to find something on the street. If you want to find something that, uh, if like the, the, uh, uh, the street property doesn't exist, this is how you would do it. So same select as you saw before, but you just check that it is null. So, 
everything, when the, when the JSON extract function pulls something out and it doesn't find that keyword, it will equal to null. Make sense? Nodes. <coughs> so here, coming back to the, uh, the comparison to text. On the left-hand side here, you see uh, the, the, the database put into a JSON type. On the right-hand side, you see it put into the text type. And just a basic comparison here, doing a select distinct from this data set. The only difference here is, again, the data type. You see how quickly it's able to traverse the objects. This is a full table scan uh, compared to whether it's a text thing. So this all has to do with the fact that when it's stored into the database, uh, it's actually already uh, pulled out all the keys, sorted all the keys, and done all that validation work in the beginning, which makes it just more simple or faster in the extract uh, um, uh, function that runs later. So this execute stuff. So just a, out of the box, not doing anything special, uh, just leveraging the JSON data type, you get uh, a number of, uh, of, of benefits, including uh, performance uh, uh, benefits compared to the to, the, uh, to a text type. Okay. So the third thing is generated columns. So you take a look at this while I drink a little bit of water. So first of all, I want to stress this is a, a generic feature which can be used in many different uh, Scenario, so it's a, it's a nice feature by itself, but it's particularly nice in the context of JSON, and that's why we developed it in the first place or put a priority in it in the first place. So the basics of a generated column is that <coughs> I have my basic table, which is an ID and an integer, and then uh, I want to have a computed column, which is my integer plus one. So you would basically define it here as my integer plus one. So this, of course, is a, a thing that you cannot insert in anything into, right? It will give you an error. This is specifies a generated column, so you're not allowed to update that. It's something just you can read, but it keeps it always up to date. So if you change something or you add something uh, to my integer, it will always make sure that my integer plus one is exactly as you specified it, my integer plus one. So great feature, could be any type of of, of function here, or, or, or plus or minus, or whatever you might want to do. Uh, so uh, imagination there, and you can make use of it. But for, okay, before I jump into that, okay, let's look how we, we use this in, in conjunction with, uh, with uh, um, a JSON. So what we've done now, we have our original thing that has ID and features. IG and feature in the features table. And now I do alter table and add a new column, which is a computed or a generated column, which is feature type, which is where I extract the type. And why would I want to do that? I may, I may I want to do it just because I want to be, have a very simple access to feature type because it's something that I access over and over and over again. But the most important thing is that on that uh, generated column, I can then add an index. And why do we use indexes? It's because we want things to go fast. So you see selecting distinct from feature type, which was the same query we ran before, uh, which took 12.8 seconds with text, 1.2 seconds with a, uh, uh, just switching to the JSON data type. Then of course, adding an index on top of this will make it so much faster because now I don't have to do a full table scan anymore. It just goes to the index and, uh, and pull, pulls out the, the, the necessary information. Uh, some impor important information here uh, in the red boxes. Uh, this alter table here is just a metadata change. It's basically a virtual column. It doesn't uh, actually instantiate the column. It's always computed when needed. Secondly, uh, the, uh, so it's an online operation. Secondly, uh, the, uh, the creation of the index 
uh, is also an online operation. It's fast, I mean, as fast as you can, you can build the object, but it happens in the background. So you can sort of process things in parallel threads while you're doing it. It does take some time in this sense, uh, 0 0.7 seconds, of course, because it actually needs to create the index. The index needs to be uh, physically there for, for, for um, uh, uh, to be able to make use of it. Um, and then, of course, I already commented on, on, on the speed here. Okay, uh, so this is how you do functional indexing with 5.7. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, this is how you use it in uh, the context of uh, uh, functional indexes for, for fast search into uh, JSON objects. <coughs> um, and just some more comments then around the, the um, alter table adding and pulling that information out. Uh, the, the default behavior is to have it as uh, virtual. I, not computed all the time, stored into a, a, a materialization of that, but rather than uh, um, um, computing it on the fly. The other option is to actually specify, I want this to be a stored thing. And I'll come back to that. There could be some advantages in certain cases where you want to actually do this. Of course, if you do that, that's not an online operation <coughs> and uh, it takes some time uh, to do this. Uh, for the purpose of the index which you put on top of it, it really doesn't matter. Um, in some cases, it will be faster to do one and the other, but, but for the index, you can do indexes on, on, on either of them. So a bit of a, a comparison here for the different indexing options. <coughs> uh, stored, uh, you can uh, have stored, uh, when you want to do index, you ha have to have stored if you, if you want to do it on a primary key. Uh, virtual only supports secondary keys. Uh, stored, you would have to do that if you want to do full text or GIS, because uh, currently the virtual supports a regular B tree uh, only, which is good enough for, for JSON. But of course, in a full text context or GIS, it, 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 you'd have to do it stored. Uh, mixed with fields means uh, basically if you have uh, uh, composite keys, uh, you can use it with either. Uh, and for the store, uh, it requires a table rebuild, and it's not online, but the virtual is, is, doesn't require a rebuild of the table. It's an instant alter, and it's a, a, a faster insert. Some performance comparison here. Uh, it will all depend, right, on your data, but just to give you an example here. Uh, if you have if you have things stored as virtual text versus virtual JSON versus stored text versus stored JSON, um, you will see that things, uh, when you actually do the extract, it's going to be faster. So if you have uh, a, a function which is computationally heavy to do, uh, it could be, and you want to access through that function rather than indexing, then of course it could be beneficial. But I mean, the, the end, the, in the end here, it's all gonna depend on your use case and, and how you're using it, which one is gonna be more efficient from, for, for you. I think this all makes sense, right? So coming back to the, um, so I've gone through the, the, the different aspects around um, the, the basic data type, um, the, uh, the, the functions, and the indexing. <coughs> so coming back a bit on the functions here. Uh, so normally when you bring something out, you will get a quoted string. There is something called JSON unquote. So you get the actual string out uh, unquoted. Um, and because the quotation here will indicate that it's actually a, a JSON object. That's one uh, valuable. <coughs> Again, uh, excuse me, read this. And then maybe a quiz if somebody explains it instead of me. So here you see the, the JSON search. And uh, uh, the JSON search uh, can take different as it's uh, after the column, it will can, can take different uh, arguments as the as the second one here. In this case, I've input one, so it just gives me the first uh, 
um, inside the JSON object, the first one where market appear, appears in this case. I'm searching within the, the object for, for the first appearance. There is, you can also have, I think it's uh, all, and then you get all of them. Um, that gives you a, a JSON path, uh, which is what you would use then uh, uh, to select the actual um, contents. Uh, JSON array is another function if you want to create JSON arrays. <coughs> it's just basically you list what you want in there, right? So in this case, I've taken the ID, the, the, the something I pulled out from the JSON object, which is uh, through that string, the street, and then the type. And of course, the arrays that are created here are the ID, and then the, the, the street, and then, well, it's all. This type here is feature in all of them. That's why it's a bit confusing. It always pull, pulls out to the same. But this is an example how you would. And this one, you basically take three random uh, objects from the database and dust this on. Uh, another important function is how you create JSON objects. <coughs> this one is a little bit different. Uh, JSON array, you just have like five or four, how many arguments you want. This one always has to be uh, an, an even number of arguments because these always are uh, key value pairs. So ID and what you actually want to put there, street and then what you pull out and type. <coughs> then you actually get uh, valid JSON objects out in this example. So here you have your, your pairs from your JSON object. <coughs> JSON replace, you want to manipulate JSON objects. Self-explanatory. So in this case, it's uh, highlighted in red. I want to basically replace here um, uh, the, uh, the type with an array. Um, so dollar dot type there pulls out that uh, key and then replaces what is ever coming after with whatever I put in. In this case, I happen to input a JSON array, but of course it can be a JSON object or whatever I want to do there. Um, as I pointed out before, there are many of these um, uh, JSON functions which you can familiarize yourself with the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the documentation. Uh, the highlighted ones are the ones that I've gone through uh, today uh, in this talk, uh, but there are of course many more um, lengths and uh, if somebody, you can check if something here contains something and uh, you can check if it's a valid JSON object and, and many of those and actually I think already there are some, some requests for additional uh, functions that we've seen uh, make sense that we're probably going to add in an upcoming 5.7 release. So as soon, the sooner you test this out and the sooner you give us feedback on, on, on functions that might be needed around this uh, and that makes sense, uh, the quicker we can get it into the, to the, to, to the 5.7 code base. And you see a pointer there to all the, the JSON functions that you can dig into the, uh, the, uh, the literature. <coughs> Um, uh, just a quick note then on, on uh, uh, the comparison. Uh, if, you, if you compare a JSON object which contains one with one, it equals true. So there's some automatic casting here. Uh, you can compare JSON objects with each other and they will, if they are equal, they will return one here in this case, that they're actually equal. So here's just some uh, casting mechanisms to, to create uh, JSON objects. Actually, now when I look at it, I'm actually thinking I'm going to change this example to something which is more illustrative, uh, where you actually create them in two different ways on both sides, because here it's created the same way. But anyways, they, you can compare them with a compar comparison operator. Okay, so when, when to JSON and when not to JSON? <coughs> well, again, it's, it's really up to you. You, you, you know your application ba both their uh, best. It's, it's really up to you. Uh, there are advantages to to uh, to either, and uh, just to 
to clarify the question to JSON or not to JSON, where okay, should I use my 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 normal schema that I was strongly typed with columns and making sure that they all exist, or should I have more of a schema-less type of approach where okay, it's basically free format what the application puts in, and I would uh, basically the application or some middleware would have to make sure that that it actually is the way I've told my application developers that it should always contain name or should always contain something else. So there are a bunch of uh, things to think about, of course, around this. Uh, so storing as a column, it's really, then you have a central place where you maintain your schema. And I mean, you've worked in this space, so you understand this just as well as, as I do. Uh, the, the, the advantages of having control. Uh, the application can't just go and create whatever types and, and, and content it needs to follow a certain uh, uh, controlled way. Uh, you control these changes uh, as applications evolve. You don't get so many permutations. In the first version, I called it name. And in the second version, I called the, the, the index or the, the, the key, I called it name two. Or there are examples where you have like, I don't know, capitalized N in name and then not in the other, etc. And you can have constraints over the data. <coughs> Storing as, as JSON is just the, it's, it's very quick to develop. You don't have to think about your schema. You just basically go and especially if you are working with a, 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 a language that, that, that you di directly have these JSON objects in, then it's just, you don't have to transform them into some schema and things like that. Uh, in some cases, you might have data, which is hard to model in a regular schema. Um, for example, and uh, 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 you probably all have uh, coded some kind of entity attribute value model, and you you uh, uh, you understand that uh, that doesn't really uh, work very well uh, in the database. Uh, this provides you with an alternative uh, to something like that, which can be much for um, schema changes. Uh, uh, being painful, that's alleviated somewhat in 5.6 because we have more online DDL. Uh, and I, I think I pointed out the, the ease of sort of prototyping and just get going uh, and not having to create a, a schema. Yeah. I'm, I'm going a little bit quickly here because there are a few slides still for the last 10 minutes here and I want to make sure that we have uh, some time for questions. Uh, and of course, you don't have to decide forever. Uh, you can have some of your uh, data traditionally stored uh, with a schema. And here's a typical example where you have uh, uh, your inventory in your, in your data center. They're like uh, uh, disks and there are machines and so on. They have some basic, they have an ID, they have some sort of description. They have a vendor which uh, you bought it from. It has a, a serial number. But then after that, it might be different, right? Uh, SSDs have their capacity in gigabytes. CPUs have core counts, etc. So you can combine the, the two having a, 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 a schema and, and, and schema less for your convenience. <coughs> and then some other features. Um, so, uh, okay, let's not dig into that. It's gonna take too much time. Uh, JSON documents, they may compress very well, as you're well aware of. Uh, 5.7 has some new features around compression. Um, uh, we have had compression for quite some time. There's a new version here, but just to illustrate that it might compress very well without digging into, and 5.7 has some uh, uh, um, compression capabilities. Uh, some additional things, I mean, you may use views and triggers to migrate between JSON and top-level columns. If you want to sort of, okay, I decided that some part of my JSON object, I actually want to pull it out. Um, and an important aspect of this is that 5.7 now supports multiple triggers per table. Before it was just one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, another thing that we have got a lot of great feedback is around the server-side query rewrite plugin. <coughs> So it's, it's a plugin that we uh, developed. It's, first of all, it's a plugin. Uh, it's part of the plugin framework, so you can develop your own plugins. But we provided some of the shelf plugins uh, that you can, you can use. So uh, well, there are several reasons why we developed this. But one of the reasons is that there are a lot of uh, uh, frameworks which create 
SQL code, which in the end, end users don't have control over, and that actually write the application on the top. So we, every so often we get quests, oh, but this uh, Hibernate or something created this really weird query, and MySQL doesn't do a good job with executing this query. And we're a bit stuck, and we go back, but you should write the query in a different way. You should have a force index, or you should have to, I don't know, change the door, join order, or do something with your query, because My, MySQL is just not going to execute this query very well. So we get stuck. Because they say, okay, but it's the framework that's doing this. I, I don't have a control. So this lets you go in and basically intercept the query. Uh, traditionally, people have written proxies and things like that that do these kind of rewrites uh, in between and, 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 and capture these sort of bad queries and, and, and write them. So you can basically, uh, 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 well, through a, sort of a, a normalized way, you can say, okay, if a query comes in, it looks like this, question marks with all the variables and so on, basic string matching. I want it to be like this. The very typical use case is that you within uh, also, uh, the new hint framework that we added in 5.7, you basically tell it, okay, if a query comes in like this, use this index. Or you might be able to say, okay, I want to join, change the join order and things like that. Uh, another thing that might be of interest is that we're doing a lot of things in the GIS space. Uh, one thing we decided with 5.7 was to really uh, go back and look at what we've done from scratch. Uh, we basically decided we're going to rip out all our old homegrown GIS stuff that we built inside our own algorithms for overlapping circles, bounding boxes, etc., etc. It's not our expertise. There's a community out there uh, in, boost, uh, in Boost Geometry that does this much better. So we're just going to pull in these functions into and let them worry about how you compute, compute these things. There are some things that we might want to change, uh, we have, and we're also contributing back to that community. So we figure this is a much better way uh, to, uh, to work with GIS moving forward. By just doing this, we removed a whole ton of bugs in GIS space that we've had uh, previously. And I, I just want to illustrate here also because it sort of, okay, now we have a much better uh, opportunity or possibility to, to, to develop this area in uh, MySQL, which previously we were sort of stuck in the way that, okay, we don't have all this expertise, and if we are going to take it to the next level, we just have to hire a bunch of GIS engineers to, to do this work, but now we can leverage this so we can, we can add features moving forward much, much, much quicker. And of course, the other part of this is equally important. Uh, it now supported in InnoDB, where previously you had MyISAM on the side, but now we have full support in InnoDB with R trees, full ACID. You can incorporate GIS inside uh, your application. It doesn't have to be in a separate um, engine and, and all the complexities around not having transactions, etc. <clears throat> so I think this is the last slide I have. Uh, I just want to stress that. Uh, it's be become really easy to upgrade to the latest version of MySQL 5.7, for example, which I encourage you to run, of course. It's available through repo, so you have all your favorite, uh, or many of the favorite uh, 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 systems there. If you want to have Debian, or if you want to have like uh, RPMs, or whatever you want. Uh, there are also official Docker images from Oracle, from us, that we build. Uh, there's something coming down the line. There was a forward-looking statement here, sorry. Uh, and then also we're available on GitHub, uh, where uh, we interact with, uh, with the GitHub way, uh, taking pull requests and, 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 and that way of working uh, since about a year back. So if you weren't aware of that, um, this is an opportunity for me to, to showcase that. Um, there are tons of blogs where you can read more. Uh, uh, together with a reference manual, of course. Uh, so we have Olivia here who's written a, an excellent blog around uh, using JSON um, in French. Uh, normally our blogs come out in, in English. Uh, so we have with the server team blog, tons of stuff on JSON. Uh, and then of course on the reference manual there are lots of, lots of information that I encourage you to dig into. And I think that completes, uh, and I don't know if you want to take over, Savia, for the Q&A, so I can save my voice a little bit, uh, um, and then maybe you want to do something with the, with the dolphins. Any questions? 
Des questions Merci pour la présentation. Euh, moi, j'avais une question par rapport à la sauvegarde avec mes SQL Dump. Du coup, on a ces nouvelles. Enfin, euh, on va avoir ces nouvelles colonnes générées, donc soit depuis un JSON, soit depuis euh, une expression euh, quelconque. Et euh, au niveau de la sauvegarde, est-ce qu'on va avoir euh, la donnée calculée au moment de la sauvegarde ou c'est quelque chose qui est pas du tout, pas du tout inclus dans le dump? So it's all, it's all about backups, okay. uh, which works. Okay. Yeah, works. Backups of JSON objects. Okay. Uh, uh, without knowing tons of details, it should be just like backing up any other object. Was there any particular aspect or was it the generated columns you were thinking about specifically? Okay, okay, the generated columns. Um, I'm, not, I'm not aware of any issues that should be. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that okay, you back, you, you do a, a MySQL dump, for example, and then you would get basically the generated columns, and then when you try to insert them again, uh, they would basically barf and say, okay, you can't really insert this because it's a generated column. Uh, that's that that should not happen. Uh, I'm I'm not aware that, that we have such an issue. I can understand that you're asking the question because uh, I, I can just hope that my engineers have thought about this problem at this point in time. And if, if they haven't, uh, it's definitely a bug that we need to fix. Okay. Hello. Uh, thanks for the talk. Yeah. Um, do you know if uh, in the near future uh, you can insert um, a feature like um, JSON schema validation? You know, if you You insert the data, you can validate it. Uh, right. I, I, actually, I, I just saw an email on that when I read my email this morning uh, that this has popped up. Maybe it was from you already. <laughs> uh, so there is an internal discussion around this. Uh, I think somebody is writing something on how you can do that using, I don't know, they're discussing doing it through triggers and, and things like that. Um, uh, It's, it's, I can understand the question, but it's, it's, it's really funny uh, in, as a general, people are asking for schema less and then we give them schema less and then they come back. <laughs> can you please give us the schema back? But uh, I, I fully understand and appreciate the question and, and I think it's a topic that we're going to dig into over, over time. I'm sorry we are out of time for questions. Uh, thanks again, Thomas, and I think you will be able to talk with him too. If you have any other questions. Il y a des dauphins pour ceux qui veulent en prendre. Il faut venir les chercher et il y a des stickers quand il n'y aura plus de dauphins. Vous avez posé la question C'était voilà, monsieur derrière. Allez-y, allez-y.